What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be video three in my bungalow renovation series. And today we're going to talk about kind of the anatomy of a lath and plaster wall. You'll find these in older homes. Uh, this home was built in 1930. So it is almost exclusively lath and plaster, except for a couple spots where the previous owner tried to remodel with drywall. Um, but lath and plaster poses some unique challenges. It can crack. The, the plaster can sag, it has multiple layers that you have to deal with. Um, so we're going to look at that wall structure and then we're going to do some patches using drywall, uh, talk about how to shim it up to level and uh, make it look nice. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's talk lath and plaster for a second. Um, I know you've probably heard the term. Uh, it's an old building uh, process and some old materials that you find in a lot of these houses. This one was built in 1930, so it definitely has lath and plaster. So what you see behind me is the back side of a lath and plaster wall. The front side was demo, demo, <laughs> demoed when the uh, original owner took the kitchen out. So we can see through to how this is actually built. So take a look here. Um, what you have are the studs. So these are the support portions of the wall. And then these strips of wood are called lath. These are just nailed onto the front of the studs. So you can see the little nail holes there. So the lath is nailed in, and then this stuff here, this is the plaster. So it's just smushed into the lath and allowed to harden. So it smushes in, that gives the rigidity of the wall. And then the top part is a skim coat. So this is rough um, and, and hard. And then the skim coat goes over top and is allowed to dry. And it is finished off and then painted so that it looks like a smooth wall. So I'll show you what the finished type of plaster wall looks like. So here, you can kind of see all of it here together. So this is the back side of the other wall with it smushed through the lath. This is the skim coat uh, and it's been painted. And then this is part that's cracked off. The skim coat is the fragile piece that you see cracking on most plaster walls. And then this part can get very crumbly once it's exposed. But this is the part that's smushed uh, through the lath. So that's the construction of a plaster wall. Makes it very challenging to repair them once they ever start to go. Do a little plaster repair. Not sure if the method I'm using is a good one. It's one I kind of decided to do myself. So we've got this hole here, it's about the size of my hand. And uh, it's, it's in plaster, so it's kind of crumbled around the edges. So what I'm gonna do is cut a square hole that hits two studs right about here that will allow me to patch in a piece of drywall that will sit flush with this and tape around the edges and then create a good, just a good patch. So I use this to square off the edge and make sure it's level and draw it with my marker. So got my mask on and my oscillating multi-tool, and I'm gonna cut around the plaster, and then I'll cut back the lab, and we'll create the hole. And you can see here, so I cut out and spliced in a sheet of drywall. And so this is the cutout. You can see the skim coat kind of crumbled there and there and around the edge. So I'm going to get drywall compound and seal all this up. But uh, I splice it in and also the challenge is the depth on this because of the way it's done is not consistent. So the depth between the stud face and the face of the plaster can be anywhere from half an inch to three quarters of an inch, sometimes even more. And this is half inch drywall. So on the shim, on the studs, I had to add shims. So when I screw this in, it sits flush here. So there's not a bump or a ridge, it's flush across. Uh, I had to put in uh, eighth inch shims because this is about five eighths. Things to consider. And so this is the next piece. 
I've cut all the plaster out and squared off the edges. So I'm going to be splicing drywall in here all the way to the corner so you'll see a nice flush wall. So like I said, the depth of the plaster is variable. Here, it's between three quarters of an inch and one inch deep. So I have added a shim, which is actually the old lab that I pulled off the wall. So I've shimmed this up and then I've got to shim this stud as well. So I've got these, these old strips of lab. I just take my bread mailer and and that will give me a surface that I can screw the drywall into that will sit flush all the way across this wall. So there won't be any wobbling or variations from that or from down here, and it'll fit right under the window casing. Uh, should look good. Drywall patches in, first coat of mud, which will get sanded flush. Still have to do the bottom portion of the wall. Insulation's in. Patched that. Patched this piece. Patched this piece. One more spot that needs to be patched is this place where I took the wall out and it left a gap. So I'll show you what I've added in here, starting at the bottom. So this drywall piece butts right up onto this stud, covers it completely, so there's no nailing surface. So I've added in blocking here that sits dead even with that. This will allow me to screw into this. So blocking added here, here, and there, and then I had to shim this up because it sat a little bit behind. Those are just nailed into the adjoining stud. On this side, the depth of the plaster up here is three quarters of an inch, so I had to cut shims here, 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 and then as we come down, the wall actually gets thinner to five eighths of an inch. So this is a thinner shim, another thinner shim, and another thinner shim. And then I've got little dots right here because when I put the drywall patch in, it'll cover this whole area. So on both sides, I've marked where I can put a screw, just with little dashes. So I'm going to cut this piece and screw it in for the patch. So here's the patch all the way to the ceiling. This is uh, with the first coat of drywall compound, so it's a little rough. I don't need to dry and be sanded. If you look down the wall, really not bad. It's just a very slight wiggle. Pretty smooth top to bottom. Really pleased with how that turned out. Well, that'll about wrap it up for this video. A um, few little uh, patches, some, some wall repair. I hope you learned something about the, the wall structure of plaster and lad walls. And in the next video in this series, I'm going to be doing some plumbing uh, things uh, in the kitchen and underneath the house to really shore up the systems in the house. This is the kind of stuff you don't see on HGTV, so uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when the next video comes out. Give us a thumbs up. helps that YouTube, YouTube algorithm pick up the video. And, uh, and leave a comment below. If there's anything you like, anything you want to learn, uh, let me know about it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.